Hey, this is Farmer Rishi from Sorvolia Farms and Nursery. Welcome to this month's lesson on composting at home. Today I'm going to be showing you a method of composting specifically for kitchen scraps that I developed a couple years ago. And I think this is just the easiest, most effective method for people, especially in urban areas with small spaces, to be composting at home. This method requires no special bin, very little space, no watering, very little time. You don't need to purchase anything. All you need is some kind of bin. Could be a tote like this, or it could just be a pot. And you need a bag of commercial compost. Um, so I'm gonna go over this extremely simple method, which is what we use here on our farm as well, to create just a beautiful, rich compost that you can use in your food garden at home or in your flower beds. Uh, I'm also going to be going over all the ideas around composting, including what is compost, what can we compost, what can't we compost, how can we use our compost. So we'll go over all that. I'm going to go into just the method of composting first and some of the ideas around composting. First, let's talk about what compost is. So a lot of times we, when we think of compost, some people might think of the things that we're going to compost, right? Like our kitchen scraps. Um, but compost is actually what is the end product of decomposing those kitchen scraps into something that we can feed our soil with. So this here is actual compost. So this is, and this is actually, a, you know, this amount of compost will take about 10 times that amount of food scraps to create. So the amount of food scraps that I needed to make this pile of compost was probably something like this. And it breaks down and it becomes this very dark chocolate colored, rich, soft, gushy stuff. And that is when it's ready for our garden. And there's some stuff in here that I put in, like I thought that this was a cotton mask and that didn't decompose, that's polyester. So we can pick stuff like that out. Uh, but everything that is decomposable will decompose. Even things like bones don't take a long time to break down. So a chicken bone here didn't really decompose completely. So we can take that out as well. Um, but this is compost that's ready to go in our garden beds. Um, so what can we compost using this method of composting? Basically, like I mentioned, any type of kitchen scraps. So I have a little bucket like this that I keep on my kitchen counter and see what's in here. Um, I've got, you know, potato peels, carrot peels, avocado skins, paper towels, little paper board that probably came from some vegetables from the grocery store, banana peels, onion skins, there's some cheese in here. All of this can be composted. I also have this bag of, of corn chips that I lost at the back of my pantry. They've gone rancid. This is also Great, so all of this is great material for compost. And using the method that I'm gonna show you today, we're gonna to break this down into this. For this method of compost, we're actually going to be using commercial compost as our base to create our homemade compost, to compost our kitchen scraps. Now, commercial compost, if you look at it, uh, what, you know, what comes from the bag, it's not really composted yet. It's not 100% composted. I would say it's about 80% of the way there. But when you're looking at this, you know, there is a lot of fine material, but there's a lot of rough material as well. There are wood chips and there are twigs and it's just not completely composted. However, in a brand new garden, you need to use a lot of commercial compost because if your soil has never been fed before, you need to be introducing this stuff. And so we need this anyways. What we're gonna do is before we, instead of just applying this commercial compost directly, we're gonna supercharge it first. We're gonna finish the composting process. We're gonna break down all this fine stuff using our kitchen scraps. So our kitchen scraps are going to enhance this commercial compost and bring us over into the homemade compost. So let's look at those side by side just so you can see the difference that we're gonna make. This is the commercial compost, this is the homemade compost. You can see the homemade compost, much richer, much darker, uh, less dusty even. This is still kinda dusty. This is 
clumped together. The particles are clumped together. They're bound together. Uh, if we're looking back at our what is soil video, the uh, bricks in this have been glued together better. Uh, so this is going to be a much better compost than this, uh, but this is a great starting point for us. So let's get into how we're going to do this. First thing you're going to need for this method is some kind of container. Could be really anything, just needs to be, you know, I would say something a decent size and then needs to have holes in the bottom. So a 15 gallon nursery pot like this is perfect for most small spaces because it's nice and narrow, but it's got plenty of volume so you can fill it up. And also once this is full of compost, it's gonna be quite heavy. So think about, you know, what you're comfortable carrying in terms of weight, because uh, once this thing fills up, it's gonna weigh probably 20, 30 pounds uh, and it's big to move around. So if that's too big for you, just try something smaller. This is probably good for most adults. Uh, so here on the farm, because we have plenty of people and we have lots of scraps to compost, we use these totes. And these totes don't come with holes in the bottom, so you just need to add some holes in the bottom like this. Doesn't need to be that many, they don't need to be huge, just enough for any excess liquid to drain off. The actual method of composting here is actually so simple, it's hard to even make it into a lesson right now because all we're gonna do is alternate layers of this commercial compost and some food scraps. There's really nothing else to do. The only thing that you, only thing I need to tell you is that when you're starting off, you need about two inches of this commercial compost at the bottom of your container. That's just gonna act like a little bit of bedding because as you're adding food scraps in there, there's gonna be a lot of juices, you know, as that banana peel and that potato peel and carrot peel, like as they start to decompose, they're going to emit a lot of water and that's going to get caught at the bottom with this bed of compost. So we're going to start out just by putting two inches of compost at the bottom. Once your bedding is in, then you just need to start adding your food scraps. There's very little technique here, but there is a little bit. Uh, you don't want to add too much at a time. So you really don't want to be about at a one about one inch thick of food scrap materials any more and you're going to start to get a lot of the smells and the flies so keeping it kind of minimal um, will keep it even and prevent any of that kind of funky stuff from happening so if you have a bin with a larger surface area you're going to be able to add more food scraps at one time uh, but for most people, this will probably be fine. And if you find that you're, you need more space, then just start a second bin. Um, it's that easy. So let's start in this bin. I'm going to add about one inch of food scraps in here. Okay, that's what that looks like. And we can do the same thing in our larger bin here. I probably don't even have enough material to fill this one up, spread it out, and we're ready for the next step. And the next step is just to add another sprinkling of this commercial compost on top of our food scraps. So when I'm sprinkling the compost, I just want to pretty much cover like at least 75% of the food scraps so that I'm not really seeing any, you know, too much of the food scraps. It's okay to see some of it, but you want to basically cover most of the food scraps. Now you just need to keep repeating that process over and over again. One layer of food scraps, about an inch thick, and then a layer of compost over it. Now, personally, I eat a lot of vegetables at home and I have a lot of kitchen scraps. So I actually need multiple bins running at the same time because you don't want to be adding continually adding material before the previous material has broken down a bit. So it's nice to have two or three bins, maybe four or five bins, depending on how much you, your vegetables you're eating and kitchen scraps you're producing, um, so that every time you add, you know, the previous material has broken down a bit. So you're going to repeat that process again, food scrap, compost, food scrap, compost, until the bin is full, at which point you just need to let it sit for a couple weeks to let everything completely break down. Now, in the meantime, you kind of need to be water monitoring the moisture level. Um, in my experience using this method, 
I rarely need to actually add water to a bin because there's so much moisture coming from the kitchen scraps that it keeps the bin moist. And I also keep a lid on top of my bin uh, when I'm, you know, when I'm not using them. So the lid will keep the moisture in. You want to keep it in a shady location too. If you have that available to you, that'll again keep, help you with that moisture level. Um, but if you don't have a lid or you're doing it in a sunny location, then you probably will need to add water. If otherwise, you probably don't need to add water. So what you should be seeing as the bin fills up is that you have this rough material on the top, right? The food scraps that you just added and the compost, the commercial compost that you just added. And if you peek underneath, you know, if you pull any of this stuff on the top back, then you're going to see that nice, beautiful, dark, rich compost uh, that you actually want. So that's why once the bin is full, put the lid on it, uh, make sure there's moisture in, leave it for a couple weeks. And then when you come back and you see that it's all like this, then that bin is ready to go. Um, that's what makes this method so easy. You don't have to turn. You don't really need to add moisture. Uh, there's no special equipment. Um, it's almost like it's as close to instant easy compost as you can get. What can go in this compost bin? So this compost system is a cold composting system. What you traditionally think of as composting where you're building a pile and you're trying to balance browns and greens, that's hot composting. And in hot composting, we kill off any pathogens and we usually burn off any weed seeds or any seeds that are in the original material. So in hot composting, if it's done correctly, if the pile actually gets up to temperature, which most people home composting are not gonna get there, then it's okay to compost meat because any pathogens will be killed. It's okay to compost pet poop because any pathogens will be killed. And also the resulting compost of a hot composting system, there will be no viable seeds left or very few viable seeds left. This is not that, this is cold composting. So uh, pathogens, most of them will be killed off, but it's not guaranteed because we don't get up to temperature. And uh, seeds are still gonna germinate because there was no temperature. Actually, you're gonna see a ton of seeds germinating in this compost. So what does that mean for what you can put in here? Well, you don't wanna be putting meat in here. You don't want to be putting any pet poop in there. That, those are the two things that are going to give you pathogens. So that, that doesn't go in this composting system. Now, when you're, comp, when you're adding all your food scraps in here, you know, like your bell peppers, your tomatoes, uh, your cucumbers, your melons, a lot of those are going to have viable seeds in them. So when you use this compost, you might get those plants germinating wherever you put this compost out, which is not necessarily a bad thing, it's just something that you need to know is gonna happen. What's perfectly safe to put in here is any type of fruit, vegetable, grain, dairy, scrap, and that can be cooked or raw, right? As long as there's no meat in it, it can go in here. Uh, unlike some other composting systems, you can also put citrus in here, no problem, it'll eat it up fine. Paper products are perfect too. So napkins, paper towels, regular printer paper, cardboard, all of that is fine. If any of that has like a plastic coating over it, you know, some of the plastic cups or paper cups will have like a plastic lining on the inside or some boxes might have like a plastic coating over the cardboard. You can actually put that in here. Uh, the paper part will break down and then the plastic will remain and you could just pick that out at the end. That's up to you. You can also put fabric. So any kind of uh, uh, plant-based fabric like cotton or linen, those are fine in here too. I've even put a pair of my boxers that was like 98% cotton and 2% poly uh, elastic. And when it finished composting, I just had like a shell of elastic left and all the cotton had decomposed. So I just threw away that remaining elastic and that was fine. To keep flies and rodents out of your bin, the best thing you can do is to get a bin that has a lid that kind of snaps on like this one does. 
uh, the rodents, that will pretty much keep them out. For flies, the lid is going to help. The most important thing is actually to just make sure that when you add your food scraps in, that they're pretty much covered with that commercial compost. That's going to make sure that the food scraps are breaking down fast enough that the fly larvae don't have time to hatch. And it also kind of helps suppress the larvae as well and just keeps them from getting to that next stage. After you've been doing this for a couple months, then you should have some nice finished compost like this. So let's go show you how to use it. The compost that we've created here is extremely microbially rich. So in our lesson about soil, we talked about how microbes are really important to building the structure of soil. They're the brick layers that glue the rock particles to each other and build those structures. That's what's primarily in this compost. That's the main benefit that this compost is gonna to provide to our soil is those microbes. So when we're adding this compost to our garden, the last thing we wanna do is just lay it out on the top of the soil, baking in the sun, because that's gonna kill off all the microbes that we've been cultivating in here. When you buy a commercial compost, that stuff's been in a bag, plastic bag, sitting in the sun, baking in a nursery for weeks or months, there's very few microbes in there, almost none. Uh, this has got so many, we've been cultivating it for so long, we don't want them to bake and just die off. So when we're applying this compost to the soil, we really wanna make sure that it is not being exposed to the sun. And there's two ways that we can do that. One is just to sprinkle that compost on the surface and then cover it up with something. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is just take some of this uh, lamb's quarter that we had that I didn't want to be growing in somewhere else. And I'm just gonna chop this up to cover my compost. This is gonna keep those microbes nice and happy and give them time to migrate down into the soil. Once I've spread the compost out, it's best practice to water it in. That way you're washing the microbes down into the soil so that they can really get started with their work. The other method is really simple too. Just gonna make a little hole. And we're doing this right next to a pineapple guava tree we just planted. And I'm just gonna stick a nice handful of the compost down into that hole. And then cover it back up. So again, just protecting those microbes in that compost from the beating sun, putting it down there so it'll be in a spot where it, there's still a lot of moisture, uh, and now those microbes can spread into the surrounding soil. If you're gonna use your compost in a potted plant, same idea, you can either take that compost and spread it over the surface and then cover that up with something like some dried leaves, or simple way, just dig a little hole and put a handful or, two, handful or two of compost in your hole and cover it back up. I hope you enjoyed this lesson on composting at home. I know composting can be a bit of a mysterious process and I think the method that I showed you today really takes a lot of the confusion and complication out and you can get a lot of great compost using this method. I've been doing this myself for so many years and this is the compost that I use in my own garden and here on the farm. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson and join us for our next one. Remember, no garden too small, no soil too poor. I'm Farmer Rishi and this is the never ending gardening course.